Hi friends, let me give you some information about this Sunday's worship service. This Sunday, August 23rd, we will live stream from Centenary Sanctuary at 9 o'clock in the morning. We think we have all of the problems from last week worked out, but continue to be patient with us. You'll find that live stream on Centenary's website on the sermons page. That's centenaryumc.com forward slash sermons. You can also find it on our YouTube channel. In YouTube, search Centenary United Methodist Church, Granville, Ohio. You might want to subscribe to that channel while you're there. While you're thinking about it, you might want to also subscribe to my channel so you can find the daily messages a little easier. You can search YouTube for Pastor Casey Wilson. We are planning to be outside again on August 30th, but I'll give you details about that next week. I want to revisit the scripture from last Sunday's worship service. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 and 9, the Apostle Paul writes, We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. On Sunday, my children's message focused on being pressed in or afflicted but not crushed. On Monday, we talked about being struck down but not destroyed. Today, I want to think with you for a few moments about being perplexed but not driven to despair. You know what it is to be perplexed. Have you ever faced a difficult decision and wondered what in the world you should do? Have you ever examined your life and wondered where in the world is it going? Have you ever experienced a little roadblock or a traumatic setback and wondered why in the world did this happen? You know what it is to be perplexed. There is a lot of perplexedness these days. I think I just made that word up. There's the pandemic, the presidential election, poverty, food insecurity, wildfires, hurricanes, human sexuality, and that doesn't even touch on our own personal perplexedness, like making difficult decisions or discerning purpose in situations that we're facing or, or figuring out our next step for the next stage of our life. It can be overwhelming. And sometimes we just want to throw up our hands and say, whatever. And we lose a sense of hope and purpose. When the spirit of the living Christ is in us, when we live not by our own power, but by God's power, we can still expect to be perplexed from time to time, but never driven to despair. We may not know what to do in a certain situation, but we can trust that something can be done. We might not know where our life is heading, but we can trust that it's heading somewhere. We might not know why some things happen and some things don't happen, but we can trust that God is love and build our faith on that. Whatever perplexedness is in your heart and mind these days, trust that God is love. And receiving and sharing that love is what keeps us from despair. God loves you, I love you, and I'll see you again soon.